The hot air balloon in this problem is rising at 5 meters per second. A man leans out the side and releases a sandbag at the instant it's 40 meters above the ground. We'll call the ground y equals 0, which means that the sandbag's initial height, y0, is 40 meters. The sandbag's initial velocity is 5 meters per second, the same as the balloon that it's riding in. The sandbag's path then looks like this. It'll rise for a little bit and then start to fall, hitting the ground eventually. While it's in flight, its acceleration is constant at minus g, minus 9.80 meters per second squared. Part A asks us to find the sandbag's position and velocity at two different times after its release. We'll find its position using this kinematic equation, which you can rewrite for the final position. And we'll find the velocity using this one. Now we just need to substitute the times into these equations. The position at a quarter of a second is shown here. When you substitute all of these numbers and calculate, you find that height is 40.9 meters above the ground. The velocity at that same time is calculated here. It's the initial velocity minus g multiplied by the time. That gives you 2.55 meters per second. It's going up because the velocity is positive. At the second time of one second, do the same calculation with the new time to find that the height is 40.1 meters above the ground and the velocity in the same way, finding that it equals negative 4.80 meters per second. The negative sign there tells you that it's moving down at that time. Let's move these results up here so that we can clear the way for the rest of the problem. And I'll erase all of this. Part B of the problem asks us for the sandbag's greatest height above the ground. That greatest height is shown here. If we call it y max, then we know that it occurs when the sandbag is not moving, is changing from going up to going down, so its velocity there is zero. The easiest way to find that height is using the time-independent kinematic equation. When the velocity is zero, the height is the maximum height. Rearrange this equation, solving it for y max, and you get this. We can substitute the numbers into this equation now. The maximum height is 40 meters plus the initial velocity squared divided by 2g. And when you calculate, you find that it's 41.3 meters. So the sandbag rises a little bit after being released before it starts to fall again. Part C asks us to find the time between release and hitting the ground. There are two ways to do this. The first is to use this kinematic equation. If you do that, the final height is going to be zero. So y would equal zero, and you would solve this for the time when y equals zero. The solution requires the quadratic equation. Another option is to first find the velocity when the sandbag hits the ground and then find the time when it has that particular velocity. That's what we'll do here. Find the velocity using the time independent equation. And that's this one and you can solve it for the velocity. It equals plus or minus the square root of the initial velocity squared minus 2g times y minus y naught. The final height is 0 and the initial is 40. Choose the negative root because we know the sandbag is moving down when it hits the ground. You find the velocity is minus 28.4 meters per second when the sandbag reaches the ground. Now we need to find the time when the sandbag has that velocity. And for that we use the time dependent equation. Solve it for the time. 
It's the difference in the velocities, final minus initial, divided by the acceleration, minus g. Substitute numbers. To find that, it equals 3.41 seconds. That's how long the sandbag is in flight. Part D asks us for the sandbag speed when it hits the ground. That's the magnitude of the velocity when it hits the ground. We already know that, so taking the magnitude gives us 28.4 meters per second.